I'll read you the one of the uh, ITAR messages to the world. It says, taken together, the ITAR members, a tokamak reactor intended to create fusion, represent three continents, over 40 languages, half the world's population, and 85% of global gross domestic product. All for this purpose. In the offices of ITAR organizational central team and the domestic agencies and laboratories and industry, literally thousands of people are working toward the success of ITAR. That's just one reactor trying to create atoms on fire. After 40 years of fighting for life on Earth with you, the reality is I did do all I can realistically do for you. And that's because you refuse to participate in defending our world by establishing what has value instead of want. You want what you want. It's all that you want. You don't want anything else. Well, this is what you get. So, reality then states to you, unless you try to stop those who are intentionally planning on, working on, uh, using machines to ignite atoms on fire, unless you stop them, our world will end. That's not a game. Just look at the evidence. It's not an illusion. Look at the things they state. The purposes of their heart. Yet yeah, they have one. The machines built by universities for that purpose and governments uh, funded by counterfeit money prove it is so. They are trying to ignite an atomic fire. That means burning atoms on a planet where made of atoms so everything is fuel. We can't put it out. And it's just not going to magically extinguish itself. The sun would prove that. Wrong is a dead world. Our earth becomes just like the sun. That's the possibility. That's the reality of their ignition of atoms on fire, which we cannot put out. Therefore, our world becomes the sun. And it will explode, taking the solar system with us. Nothing could be more disrespectful for life than gambling everything on Earth on the idea, the theory, that there's not enough gravity here to sustain the fire, so it'll just, you know, go poof and put itself out. We can't control atoms on fire. Everything is made of atoms, which means everything is fuel. I continue to provide information for you on www.justtalking5.info and its associated sites. I have provided videos which you can uh, uh, look there free, but uh, as described on Just Talking 5. Or you can go to youtube.com slash Jim Osterber, O-S-T-E-R-B-U-R. All the rest of whether or not we live or die as a world, at least on, based on atoms and everything else, actually, that's a threat, is up to you. I have been fighting with you for 40 years and rejected at every turn. People have simply ran away to hide. It's not what they want, so they run away to hide. But you can't hide from an atomic fire. You can't hide from an earth becoming a sun. If you won't fight for this world, it will end. So says the evidence. That's the facts. The reality of our time is it's our choice to make them stop or let them continue. That's, you know, that's, that's my description to you. James Frank Oster on this date, November 2nd or 1st, 2016. Your scientists and your universities are never going to admit they were wrong. They control too much money, they literally gain too much power and pride, and they literally make up stories to, so they can continue in their fantasies and, you know, you can continue in, you know, your belief of, as a cult. Anything they say is true, isn't that so? But they have discarded every physical law and every physical reality and bent every story to fit their purpose, which is to, uh, you know, play with their fantasy. That they can have an atomic fire on Earth and control it. They can't. Wrong is a dead Earth.
wrong is this earth becomes a sun. Our only real defense, legal defense, is to demand a courtroom and identify, make them prove, what does happen if atoms ignited on fire simply do not extinguish themselves. What happens then? The answer is that there's fuel for the fire, so the fire continues to burn. You can get a legal moratorium making them stop, making other countries stop, and cut down their electrical service so they can't experiment anymore. That is the only legal way to find out for yourselves. Your entire world literally depends on that answer. You can't stop once the atoms are on fire. Every other option dies. You can't you can't turn back the clock and and uh, you know extinguish a 10 million degree flame. A candle flame is about 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Compare that to 10 million degrees Fahrenheit. You can't even approach it. The three most dangerous machines that you'll be seeing on the back are trying to ignite that same fire as is on the sun here. Atoms on fire. Doesn't matter what they say, it's atoms on fire. The scientists at the Max Planck Institute in Germany say they have successfully conducted a revolutionary nuclear fusion experiment using their experimental reactor, the Windelstein 7-X, WS7X Stellarator, they call it. They have managed to sustain a hydrogen plasma, which means the the uh, the gases that uh, the uh, what, uh, well it means that that they're approaching the point when atoms are going to be ignited. That is a key step on the path to creating workable nuclear fusion. According to them, fusion, the nuclear reaction that powers the sun and the stars, is a potential source of safe, non-carbon emitting and virtually limitless energy. Harnessing fusion power is the goal of ITER, I-T-E-R, that's a French uh, uh, reactor, trying to do the very same thing, which is to ignite atoms on fire, which has been designed as a key experimental step between today's fusion research machines and tomorrow's fusion power plants. They want to use the fire to uh, run power plants, which is uh, a very uh, uh, re, uh, you know, it's, it would be a very big heat source with very little fuel and very little pollution. The only problem is, instead of fusion, as they claim, it's burning atoms. You can't, you know, the, the as we've discussed, uh, the sun isn't as simple as they try to make it. Fusion is not two hydrogen atoms, you know, combined into a helium atom. And we'll go to the idea for the National Ignition Facility, NIF, which is renamed, or uh, that's what they did call it, Lawrence Livermore Laboratories in San Francisco. Their statement is it grew out of decades-long efforts to generate fusion burn and gain in the laboratory. Current nuclear power plants which use fission, or the splitting of atoms, to produce energy have been pumping out electrical energy power for more than 50 years. They say by achieving nuclear fusion, burn and gain has not yet been demonstrated to be viable for electrical production. For fusion burn and gain to occur, a special fuel consisting of hydrogen isotopes, deuterium and tritium must first ignite. They want to make a sun with this. A primary goal for NIF is to achieve fusion ignition, in which more energy is generated from the reaction than went into creating it. The National Ignition Facility tried now for over three years to ignite atoms on fire by this method and failed with temperatures of 180 million degrees by their estimate and 500 billion PSI according to them. It does not matter what method they insist will be safe. The only thing that does matter is these scientists are trying to ignite atoms on fire. Same as the sun. You can look up to the sun and say is this a uh, uh, all this heat from 91 million miles away? Is that the result of, of putting atoms together, making a helium atom? And of course, helium is nowhere to be found realistically in the universe. It's one of the scarcest elements there is. And if every star was producing helium, 
this whole universe would be filled with, with helium. The sun does not produce helium. And that's absolutely clear. Where is the helium? Do not accept any other conclusion. No other conclusion is real. Your universities want the same heat here as is on the sun. And we could generate a lot of electricity with a little pollution and a little mining and a little anything if we did that. But we cannot stop the fire and we cannot control it because burning atoms, which is what the sun does, clearly by the energy released, it burns atoms. That means the sun uh, isn't so simple as, you know, we're going to add two and two together or one plus one of hydrogen plus hydrogen equals helium. Helium is not being produced on the sun. If it was, helium would be everywhere. It is not being produced on the sun, which is what they call their fusion. If that's not what's happening, then their fusion is a complete lie. Think about that. Your world depends upon it. Oh, oh well. I got a little problem with the computer here. Atoms, when they ignite on fire, will be unstoppable. Yeah, your universities claim it's not that simple, but reality very simply says the energy and the longevity of sunfire, as is proven by what's released here on Earth, does prove that atoms are on fire. Nothing else contains that kind of energy. We know it's atoms on fire. We know it. You know it. They don't because if they did not have their fantasy, they would not have all the power and the pride and the money to go ahead and make experiments and, and pretend they can be kings and queens and play God. They have to modify reality so they can play God. Otherwise, you know, they lose their job and they lose the chance to play. They want to play. Unfortunately, they're now gambling with every living thing on the planet even the solar system. It is an abomination in real terms. Of course, media leaders of all kinds have said the university knows what it is doing. They're not going to help you. They didn't help me. When I demanded that people at least have a right to know what's happening, he said no. Which means to survive, to put out this fire before it starts, we, the people, must legally rise. That requires your participation, your communication, your choice for life. As a secondary protocol, it also requires First Amendment legal redress of grievances. To facilitate that, I have withheld taxes for the purpose of trial. Simply to the employees, obey the Constitution. Establish readers of grievances, and I will pay the tax. I don't mind paying tax for a government that I uh, support. Democracy, I support entirely. This is not democracy. Counterfeiting would prove that. And the Federal Reserve documents prove they are counterfeiting. The Constitution establishes redress of grievances. It is not the right of any employee, not the right of any judge, to say no. It's the law. They must do so. To prove that I docketed two cases in the U.S. Supreme Court. Docketed means this is set for trial. Only a judge can dismiss it. All of the requirements were passed. Everything was fine. The judge has to uh, take a look at it and provide either a trial or the reason why a trial should not exist legally not just because they don't want to. Each of these trials was dismissed by the secretary of the court. No judge signed them. That is actually treason, which means they are still literally legally undetermined. You can bring them right back into court, both of them, and demand this shall be answered. You can do that. You can look at www.justtalking2.info to find those uh, trials in the, in the little uh, 08 uh, uh, 
13 something and 11-100 I believe. Anyway, you'll see them on the front page. The sun has flames estimated to be 1 million miles long. And atomic fire is gambling with this entire world. Everything lives or dies based upon a single experiment which does ignite an atom on fire. Our moon is a quarter million miles from us. Fire goes four times that distance. Think about that. I demanded of the courts we the people must be informed of this risk. It is our extermination if they are wrong. We are involved. They are murderers attempting it. The court said no, as did media and other leaders. The university knows what it's doing. Well, it's your turn now to ask them to uh, identify what goes wrong. I did what I could do. I honestly feel I can stop now. This is the first time in 40 years I really think so. Because the choice is yours. I made my choice 40 years ago. Longer than that, actually. Demanding that, uh, or initially uh, wanting weapons of mass destruction to, uh, to be stopped. Uh, began it. And, but uh, they have started building these machines to ignite atoms on fire 40 years ago. Nobody cared. There are lots more threats as well. But they don't matter unless you change this one in particular. Every day, people try to ignite atoms on fire. Currently, every day, today, tomorrow, the next day, they try to ignite atoms on fire. We cannot survive atoms on fire. That is simple and plain, and you know it is true. You know it is true. If we ignite atoms on fire, which is what they're trying to do, Everything here is fuel. It's all fuel. You too. It occurs to me that I would be remiss if not reminding you of the biblical book called Daniel 12. Well, the chapter Daniel 12 is, uh, which gives an ending to life. A prophecy states, when the daily sacrifice, which is an honest respect for life, you know, an honest respect that uh, acknowledges this is a miracle, we don't have to be here. This is a miracle. And the great abomination, which is the end of that, you know, they combine into the same thing. Uh, it has, has, you know, it's a great abomination today because men have created are now gambling with the entire planet. They made machines capable of destroying every life on the earth, even this solar system, by igniting earth into a sun. Think about that for a second. The evidence proves they're doing it. It's, it's not a game. It's, it's not an illusion. The first date of usage in the first of these machines with the National Ignition Facility, which can ignite atoms on fire, was April 1st, 2011. April Fool's Day. I suspect not an accident, clearly intended. Surprise! Oh well. Regardless, this starts the countdown at that, at that moment. 1,290 days have already passed. And the Bible calls that the first, first death, which means humanity uh, during that time could have stopped those people from uh, uh, playing with life, from playing God, from, from demanding that uh, they can control atoms on fire. But you did not. You wanted to wait and see. Well, you can't wait and see, but you did. So that time has passed. Then it goes to times, or, you know, according to that little thing, it's times is the next 1,335 days, which is the biblical story calls the second death, which means, like the Bible, the first part was about the law. The second part was about mercy, or Jesus. Uh, uh, coming and providing a different way uh, for people to think. All right, well, uh, we're in that right now. The next is our half time is uh, ends. You know, it just it just divides 
I don't know which you, you divide the uh, 1290 or the 1335 or add them together I don't know what what uh, that actually which one it is but the halftime ends in or the whole thing ends in uh, March or April of 2020 and I do have it listed as March 2019 on a different area but I think I made a uh, math, math you know touched the wrong key on the calculator or something Nonetheless, I do believe the correct calculation is March to April 2020. Oh well. You should think about that. But it says the second death ends at uh, 13 and 35 days. Well, the second death, you know, if you go add in the 1290 and the 1335, you end up in, uh, I think it was April 2018. As the last date, humanity gets a choice and uh, makes a difference. And, and beyond that, it's what will happen with or without mercy. So your, your time isn't quite to uh, 2020 that's just as you see the end result of what you did decide come up well that presents the possibility the book of revelation presents the possibility for a new world order at the at its last uh, uh, endings uh, you know 20 or to 22 I'm not sure exactly and that makes the end result of our time entirely dependent upon your choice and your participation Realistically, you know, what happens to us will be determined by what you decide, in large part. Biblically, by a prophecy, our world is expected to end in 2020. Your opportunity to decide or participate in that outcome by change in yourselves will be determined on or about April 21st, 2018. That's, that's the biblical prophecy of Daniel. More simply, our world will experience massive change in humanity, that means you, leading to a completely different experience of respect for life and respect for each other, or you won't survive. So says the biblical prophecy, as in more simply, change or die, it's your choice. You really should, you know, consider that. Change isn't so bad. All you have to do is, uh, you know, to, to uh, prove it isn't so, is to uh, uh, provide, demand that the evidence is uh, uh, not, not correct. Prove the evidence isn't correct. That isn't so tough, is it? Is that, is that tough, proving the evidence is correct or wrong? Go to court, investigate it, examine the reality of what we are doing or what the university is doing. Examine the reality of, uh, of, you know, adding another billion people to the population in less than 10 years and another billion to the population in less than 10 years after that and so on. When compared to the idea that in fact, uh, uh, we have a billion people already hungry. Just think what that's gonna be for the environment. Global warming, uh, you know, water supplies are, are ending, uh, food is being mutilated. Genetic researchers, they take genetics, the, the genetic code, which is the building of life, the building of bodies of life, and they throw junk into it. Would you want somebody throwing uh, garbage into your motor instead of oil? How do you think that'll work? It won't. And they rush right out once they do it. If anything survives, they rush it right outside so they can infect all of nature. Nature is the genetic code because the genetic code builds the bodies of life. So without fantasies or lies or theories unproven, you can decide for yourself what is true. After all, it's your life. You're going to live or die accordingly. You might as well decide for yourself what is or is not true. Because if you continue on as you are, completely uncaring about what your gods at the university are doing, then hell is going to arrive. 
you know, Armageddon means that uh, uh, nature is in chaos. Hell means uh, insanity has risen to the point where we know there is, we are fell into the trap and there's absolutely nothing we can do to get ourselves out of it. That is hell. The apocalypse, of course, is that uh, everybody has a gun or fire or bomb or something. And they all shoot at each other because they figure life is uh, over. And life will be over once we uh, have consumed every life uh, uh, and we eat life. So when we consume it past the point where it can rebuild itself or consume it too much and then have a disease wiped out, we can't rebuild that. So we have no food and then, you know, the water supplies are ending and we're going to have no water and, and uh, you know, it's, it's just endless. Well, it's not endless, but it's terrible. Every fact that does matter to life on Earth has been hidden by media and the courts and your legislatures and others. They don't want you to know. Well, you better find out for yourself. There's no mercy after these things pass the point of no return. You don't get to, uh, to wish it away. You don't get to pray it away. You can pray now. You have a chance to change your future now. Yeah, I think, maybe not, the point of no return is certainly close really close when nothing we can do is going to matter when it's over whether you like it or not and it doesn't matter if you're poor or rich or or a criminal or the greatest person on earth or whatever you want to think it doesn't matter we're all on the same ship together we're all on this planet and if the planet is burning or if the planet gets thrown into war with weapons of mass destruction coming close behind, we all die. It's not a game. This is not a game, and everything that threatens us does matter. Where our opportunity to make better choices will soon be over. And that's just because that's what the evidence says has nothing to do with what I want, what I don't want, that I don't go for want. What is or is not true matters. Whether you like it or not is absolutely irrelevant. I'm going to add for the sake of the religious that uh, if you allow yourselves to be simply uh, uh, drawn into is this you know biblical or is this you know not biblical or or is this right or you know any of the little details that uh, liars and failures and fools will try to draw you into that means you've avoided intentionally the reality that people are trying to ignite atoms on fire and you're avoiding the reality that we're going to add another billion people in less than 10 years and you're, you're avoiding everything important. What does matter is what ends life. That matters. Your uh, uh, media says uh, only the entertainment matters. Uh, or, or they try to make you fear in some form or fashion. Oh, isn't this terrible? And, and darn little less. Doesn't really matter which religion you are. We all die together. The world only ends once. And it will end with atoms on fire. You can debate the prophecy and whether it can end or not. But you can't debate the ending. The ending will be real. You can't debate the ending of life on Earth. It's a reality that, uh, that cannot be avoided beyond the point of no return. I'm not the issue. I'm just a, a messenger, if you can stand that idea. And I say that only because the, 
the, what I bring to you really does seem like it's a message from God. I mean, end of the world. End of the world. By people trying to ignite atoms and fire and all the rest of it. You know, one last chance. I am believing that uh, that in one form or another it is directed or or given to me to to bring to you by God. You can make any decision about that you want. It it I, it really doesn't matter to me. It absolutely doesn't matter to me. That is irrelevant in many many ways. It is. <laughs>